Welcome to my Days of Our Lives official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Teresa pours out her heart to Alex at Academy, Tate asked Holly to have lunch with him, perhaps another time, Holly said. Is everything okay? Tate asked. Holly explained that she was stressed with schoolwork, but Tate asked if there was further to the story. Holly admitted that she was embarrassed about the public fight between her and Nicole. Why would you be embarrassed? No, I just abominated seeing you so worried and not being suitable to do anything about it. Have you had any luck changing her mind? Tate asked. With a mime, Holly noted that her mama still bothered that she'd do medicines if she went to hop. She's prescribing me from going, Holly said. I get it. My mama can be really controlling, too, Tate said. Tate asked Holly if she had talked to Aaron, and she shook her head no. I missed out he will watch, since he's completely into Sophia, who's completely into you, Holly said. Tate scarfed. Sophia walked up and said hello. Tate stammered that he'd been asking Holly for help with Spanish. Except I stink at, languages, Holly said. I am enough good at them, actually, so I can indeed tutor you if you want, Sophia said. Tate accepted Sophia's offer. When Sophia offered to meet that autumn, Tate declined by noting that he'd preliminarily agreed to help out at the cantina. How's your nose doing, by the way? Tate asked. Sophia verified that it was a little sore, but not broken. Tate apologized again. It's okay. It was an accident. Anyway, I am sure it will each be cleared up by Hop, which I'm so looking forward to. And I am really glad you will be taking me, Tate, Sophia said. Tate smiled at Sophia as Holly prevented her eyes. The bell chimed, and Sophia told Tate she'd see him latterly for training. After Sophia walked down, Tate told Holly that he felt terrible that he'd agreed to be Sophia's date for Hop. Why? You know she's, like, super thrilled to be going with you, Holly said. Yeah, but I am not thrilled to be going with her, Tate combated. Tate noted that Sophia was cool, but he didn't want Sophia to get the wrong idea. Holly advised Tate to be honest with Sophia about his passions, either, it's not like she gave you much of a choice, you know, when you hit her face with that ball, Holly said. Tate noted that unless they told Sophia about his and Holly's secret relationship, Sophia might be hurt that he wasn't into her. I've to admit, I am actually glad that you are going to the hop with Sophia, Holly said. What? Tate said. Holly argued that she wanted Tate to give Sophia a chance. Tate was taken suddenly. No. I do not want to give her a chance. I want to be with you, Tate protested. I want to be with you, too, but I do not know, Tate. It's kind of starting to feel like perhaps this just is not meant to be, you know? Holly said. Confused, Tate asked Holly if she wanted to break up. It's not that I want to, it's just, perhaps it's for the stylish, Holly said. Tate dissented. It's the last thing that I want, Tate stressed. Holly asked Tate not to make effects harder. I guess I just do not understand why you are giving up on us. I do not want to be with anybody differently but you. And I've all these passions for you. Passions that I have no way had for anybody, I swear. Holly, I, Tate said. The bell intruded. Tate cradled Holly's face in his hands, and he kissed her. As Tate pulled down, Holly smiled up at him, calmed. I want you to stop fussing about what's stylish for me, because this is what is stylish for me, okay? Being with you, Tate said. Being with you is what is stylish for me, too. I just detest how complicated it's gotten. And that it's all my fault, Holly combated. Tate told Holly not to condemn herself. As long as I've you, I swear I can handle anything, Tate stressed. Holly kissed Tate farewell. After Holly ran off, Tate rumored, perhaps there's a way. Teresa returned home and set up a living room full of boxes. Alex exited the bedroom and explained that he'd done some shopping. What is the point of having plutocrat if you cannot enjoy it? Alex asked. Teresa agreed. I just allowed. 
you are going to be at work, Teresa said. Alex explained that he could make his own hours, since he was the master. Alex talked about the particulars he'd bought, and he showed Teresa his dollar ten thousand diamond, crusted watch. I got you, the corresponding women's interpretation, Alex said. Alex gave Teresa the watch, and she heaved. With a grin, Alex started to talk about the Ferrari he'd ordered, however, I suppose he surely set up a way to do it, if Victor was ever looking for a way to make it up to me for denying my birthright all these times. So, I am trying to let go of any resentment I've toward my father, Alex said. With a nod, Teresa said that was good. You know how I felt when I first set up out I was Victor's son. Indeed, knowing I might come heir at law to this whole massive fortune, or whatever, I was miserable. I was depressed. Knowing Justin was not really my father. A Joe that I actually loved and admired, my sisters not really being my sisters, and knowing that I was enough much prevaricated to my entire life, I just still have not completely gotten over the shock of that. And the sadness. Still dislocations the hell out of me, if I am being honest with you, Alex said. Teresa jounced, doubtful what to say. Alex looked heavenward and told Victor, I forgive you, Dad. As Alex started to open packages, Teresa asked him if he planned to spend all his plutocrat rather than start a trust fund for his unborn heirs at law. I am actually not indeed sure I am going to have kitties, Alex said. Alex explained that he didn't feel like the fatherly type. But what about carrying on Victor's heritage and his name? Teresa asked. With a mime, Alex noted that there were plenitude of Kiriaki's men in the world. The doorbell chimed with another delivery. I do not suppose you can fit that much further stuff in then, Teresa said. None of this stuff is staying then. It's coming with me when I move to the manse, Alex said. Shocked, Teresa asked, you are moving out? Alex verified that once the Hortons vacated the Kiriaki's manse, he planned to move back by. As Teresa goggled in horror, speechless, Alex asked her if she'd miss him. Still, especially now with the whole job situation, don't suppose about it for another alternate, if you're upset about chancing another place to live. You stay then as long as you want. I will continue to pay the rent, Alex offered. Teresa mugged. Oh, my God, Alex. You do not get it, do you? Teresa yelled. Confused, Alex asked Teresa what she meant. I do not want to live then without you, Teresa said. Alex admitted he was surprised. I like being with you. I like living with you. I want to be together with you, like, really together, Teresa confessed. Now I am authentically confused, Alex said. Teresa apologized for the mixed signals. With a shriek, Teresa admitted that she had no way stopped wanting to be with Alex. So, you no way wanted to break up in the first place? Alex asked. No. I no way wanted that, Teresa said. Teresa explained that she had been hurt and embarrassed by the offer situation, and she had overreacted. I tried to just act like I did not want to have anything to do with you by rejecting you, Teresa said. Alex noted that Teresa had ignored him for days. Teresa said she rude how she had acted. I was just trying to play hard to get. You know, I really just wanted you to miss me like crazy. I was hoping that perhaps you'd see the crimes in your ways, and also you'd supplicate me to come back to you. But that did not be, obviously. And I just played a veritably parlous game, and it just completely boomeranged in my face, Teresa confessed. Teresa said that she knew she had made a huge mistake. I am not going to play any further games. I promise. Just please, tell me it's not too late, Teresa said. After a moment of silence, Teresa asked Alex if he'd anything to say.